Okay, so in this video, we will consider our first setup of counting. And the setup is that our selection is ordered, so we keep track of which element came first, second, and third, and so forth, and with replacement. So if an element is selected at any given point, it is always available for the next selection. So here's the problem. Counting the number of ways in which R elements may be selected from a set containing N elements. So you can imagine your elements simply being balls numbered from 1 to N. So imagine that you have your set of balls. You have ball number 1, your first element, ball number 2, ball number 3, up to your last ball, ball number N. So think of your N objects, your N elements in the simplest way as balls numbered from 1 to N. And now we're saying, out of those N balls, we want to select R at random. And we want to count the total number of ways in which R balls can be selected from N balls. Well, because our selection is ordered, what we have is, as always, a Cartesian product, right? We can visualize, we have our first selection, then our second selection, then our third, up to, in the end, our rth selection, because we choose our elements. So we have our choices here. So this is what order gives us. We have to keep track of which came first, second, third, and so forth. So it is just a Cartesian product. Now let's see. For the first choice, we can choose from any one of these balls. There's n of them, so we have n options for our first choice. But because our selection is with replacement, suppose we pick ball 2 first. Before we choose again, we put it back in, and we still have n options. So we have n options for the first choice, n options for the second choice, same thing for the third choice. Whichever ball was drawn for the second pick, we put it back in and we draw again from the set of all n possible balls. So for each of our r choices, we have n possibilities. So you say, well, in total, how many in how many ways can we select these R elements? Well, we have N options for the first pick and N options for the second pick and N and N. So we are seeing simply N times N times N times N. So we're multiplying N how many times? Well, as there are R choices, we are multiplying N R times. But of course, if you multiply n r times, that is simply n to the r. And that's it. So quite simply, when we ask, in how many ways can we select r elements from a set of n elements when the selection is ordered and with replacement, the idea, as you can see, is quite simple. It's simply n to the r. And that's it. Let's consider now a short example of this. So here's the problem. A password is four characters long, and each character is a letter from the standard alphabet. So part A. How many passwords can you create if you can only use lowercase letters? So first, let us consider our possible total number of elements. There are lowercase letters from the standard alphabet, so we have our set where we select our elements from. There's a letter A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. That is, of course, 26 options, right? So n was the size of our set, so n here is 26. r is how many elements we choose. 
right? We choose r elements from a set of n elements. Well, a password is four characters long. Well, we must choose therefore four characters. So here, r, the number of elements we choose is four. Well, we have to ask ourselves, is it the right setup? Is our selection ordered or unordered? And is it with or without replacement? Well, a password, the order in which you type in the characters does matter. So here it is ordered. And nowhere are we told that the characters must be different, which means that we can use a character as often as we want. So it is a setup that is ordered, check, and it is with replacement. So we are under the right setup. An ordered selection, we choose our four characters, first, second, third, and fourth. And because it is with replacement, well, for every choice, we have 26 letters to choose from. So there are 26 options for the first character, 26 for the second, for the third, for the fourth choice. So in total, the total number of passwords is 26 to the 4, which if you calculate will give you 456,976 total different passwords. And that's part A. Part B Same question, how many passwords can you create if lower and uppercase letters are allowed? So now your set of possible choices changes. And you can visualize it. We are allowing upper and lowercase letters, which means that we can choose either lowercase a or uppercase a, lowercase b or uppercase b, all the way to lowercase z and uppercase z. So now here, that gives us, of course, twice as many selections. So n is no longer 26, but 52. Our password is still four characters long. So r is still four. We have to choose the four characters. The setup is still the same, though. It is still an ordered selection. So we have to choose our first character, second, third, and fourth. And it is still with replacement. Nowhere are we saying that the characters can't be repeated, so used multiple times. So for each selection, there are 52 possibilities. And so the total number of possible passwords that can be created with four characters, where each character is, an, is a lower or uppercase letter from the alphabet, when repetition is allowed, is 52 to the 4. And if you calculate this, you will get 7,311,616 different passwords. And that's it. Now we'll consider, in our next two videos, different setups, where sometimes we'll go from ordered to unordered, and sometimes with to without replacement. So whenever you have a counting problem, always ask yourself those two questions. Is the selection ordered or unordered? And is it with or without replacement? Once you answer those two questions, then you'll know in which setup you are and how to count the total number of ways of selecting our elements from your set of n elements. And that's it.